Hey guys, this is Zacho X. Um, sorry if I sound a little sick today, because I really am, but I decided I would go ahead and do this video and get this done with, and so we can move on. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the public variables that we need for creating this program. Some people create a client form and a host form or server form, but with what I did, I create one form together. Um, I just called it the form WinSocket, or WinSock, excuse me. And right now I'm going to show which public more public variables I used. Uh, first, you need to keep their name because you're going to in the first form it's going to say what's your name and where do you want to connect to? Do you want to be a host or connect to an IP address? So I need to keep their name because it's going to go into a different form. Um, then I need to keep if they're a host or not. So I, I have a bowling and I just true or false. And then the third one is the um, IP address. Um, this is what's kept uh, the IP address that you connected to just in case for whatever reason. I can't remember why else I kept it. You'll probably find out pretty soon. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So those are the three major variables. Um, the first form that I have is the form load. Um, you'll notice that it basically in this form, all it is is code that prevents somebody from having um, a bad IP address by putting in the wrong IP address, 000, they can't have that. Um, you can't mean higher than 255 um, per one of these slots. And uh, they pick host or join and then their name and it starts and then it goes to the other form which is the form WinSock where they talk um, to who's ever connected. Now, this form right here that I that has some code that I'm going to show right here, I'm going to show quickly because it's not really necessary. Um, it's just there because I want to prevent a user from doing something dumb or putting in something else. And at the same time, I start with this IP address, 127001. Um, the reason for that being, if you start at this IP address, it'll connect back to itself. So if I host a, uh, this on my laptop and then I open up the same program and I connect to that address, it will actually connect back on the laptop. It's like a testing, uh, it's how you would test the connections working when you're programming like this. So <clears throat> what you'll notice also to kind of open this up in the doors, if you know, if you have a router, let's, let's start with the router part. If you have a router and you know how to set the ports, um, it's very important you you enable those ports. They have to be open. If the port is not open, well, this one only uses one port. If the port is not open, um, it won't work through a router. Plus, you're going to have to connect through the public IP address, not a private, unless you're just doing within the local area network. So to get that out of the way, let's go ahead and show this form real quick. And the first thing we do is we try to find out in the form load if someone's hosting or not hosting. Oh, excuse me, this is the wrong form, that's why. I'm reading the wrong one. Okay, this one first. Okay, here we go. So I'm trying I'm finding out if this is the first time they changed text. This is the reason for that is because when they click on the name it will erase itself, but I only want to erase the first time. So if they click in the same spot, it won't erase the name. Um, just to show where that is real quick, go ahead and run this. It's right here. So if I click, this will erase, and it will not do it a second time if I click. If people ever wondered that. Um, so that's what that bowling is used for, just the first time and then from then on. Um, so from the form load, we're setting that the value right here, this, is equal to host. Um, we're setting it to true because the reason being we want to say well the person that first launches it maybe wants to be the host but they could choose 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 client or join and this is the unload okay so now here's some code I'm just gonna go real quick with um, if you change your name you can only have a max of 10 length um, the reason that being it doesn't do it right away I don't set it is because if you look at the name it's more than 10 letters so as soon as you change it, it then it sets the max length. Um, then here is check the variables, click the first time, goes to this sub, 
and then enable or disable the start button. And here's the here's how you'd prevent a key press. Um, this is important to know. I'm going to be preventing these keys right here. Colon, I'm not sure what you call this slash stuff um, in the straight line. The reason being is because we use them as a delimiter. What that means is you're going to have a bunch of uh, text and you need to split the text up. Uh, if you remember in a video I wrote a long time ago, you make you create an array and you split one chunk of text by uh, a certain type of uh, character. So in this program, we are we are splitting by this. This is used for um, these two right here are used for keeping a name inside something like the host or you, so you know who is the host and who isn't. This colon is used for when they type a message. So it'll say like uh, Zach colon and then the message I wrote. Um, so we don't want anybody he being able to push those keys. So what I do here is in the key press of the name, um, <coughs> select case key, uh, the key, and uh, if it's any of these, just go ahead and put zero. The way I found these is I just put message box. Um, I pushed a key. It told me which um, number it is, and then later I just added them in my program. So um, also check to see if, if if it is not the first time and set the text name back to equal zero, so it'll get locked. Um, and here's the enable or disable start button. Just checking to see if it's the first time. If it is the first time, just exit the sub. Otherwise, continue. Uh, check to see that if there's no name, then disable the start button. Um, check to see if it's a if it's a join. If it's join, enable start button by IP address. So it's checking the IP address. This is another function. If that equals true, then start button enabled, or else start button not ready because the IP address is incorrect. Um, if all that is okay, then else would be start the button up. It's ready to go for somebody hit the start button. And here's that sub. Uh, created a loop, and right away I checked to see if any of the um, text IP address are closed off. So let's see right here. I want to make sure none of these are empty. Excuse me, this one and this one and this one. These are control arrays. This is one, two, three, and four. The reason I did that is because it's easy to loop through them and see if there's something wrong. You'll notice right here in the code, it's exactly what happens here is I create an integer and then loop through it from the lowest bound to the highest bound. So this is going to be one through four. Let's check to see if any of them are empty. And if they are, return it's not ready equals false exit function. So if they are not empty, it's going to pass this point. So I'm going to exit the function. So it's going to continue. So I need to return the function here. Um, if all of them equal zero, then it's equal. Then the function is saying it's not ready. Otherwise, it says it is ready. <coughs> so if we go above, you'll see right here. This is it. Just asking this function, is the IP address ready? If so then the start button's ready. If not, start button's not ready. So it's just running a lot of code uh, down here. And when you keep the function together like that, it's easy to remember, oh, just run that function to see if it's if the IP address is valid or invalid. Um, then we have the user uh, change variable. If first time user clicks this text box, okay, so that's when they first click. So down here we're going to go, if it's the first time, which is going to be false, because remember it initializes at false. Um, Booleans do. So if it's the first time, then we're going to go ahead and erase the name. And if it does not erase, then add text um, and start the position back out in the front of the one. Um, what that means is uh, uh, it's going to move the cell, cell start position um, in front of the string. So it's going to be right, right there. Um, change variable value marks to never run again so once I set the sequels to true this this code will never go off again after the first time so that's the first time they click on the name going down okay this is if they click on the option which is right here this one or this one if they click on either of those these two subs go off um, they just call other subs well actually the same sub but there's just uh, different parameters. First one being which option button. So this one's op join, this one's opt host. 
and then asking if it's in the IP address is enabled. So if if it's if it's the host, they click to select host, then I don't want them to put in an IP address because they don't need to. If they click to join, right here, join, then yes, I need them to enable the IP address so they can add it. Um, let me show that real quick. So right here, you notice the start buttons, or excuse me, the IP address is not enabled where I can write something. The join allows me to. And here's the name where I type something. And if I click here and I click up here, excuse me, I'll click back down here. <coughs> You'll notice that if I race it and come back, it just starts at the same position. So that's what the, all that code did earlier um, I was talking about. So we're going to go down here. So this is that change option. It's just if if this is passed as um, true, then it's going to go down here. Where is that at? Bool enable. Oh, okay. So if it equals true, um, then it would continue this down here. But since it's false, then it would not. It would do not enabled. So basically that's all that does is enables that start button or excuse me can enable that start button right here this is that sub that enables start button but up here it's enabling the IP address for entry okay so go down there's another key press okay this is where I had to make sure that they only can push certain keys for the IP address I don't want them putting A S D something because that's not an IP address so um, I allow the backspace because you got to allow some way to erase the number if they put something automatically bad. Maybe they put a 9 by accident and they want to erase it. And then I checked the other ones. So I said 48 to 57. That's all the 1, 2, 3, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then if it's anything else, block all else. Okay. Now this doesn't block the arrow keys because that would be in the key down key code. Um, this is key. I see, I can't really pronounce it, but it's a little different. Um, so we don't have to worry about if we push left or right arrows and, and tab. Um, here is the change. So this is checking um, when that IP address, any any index, see this is a control array, since it says index is integer up here. Um, when any of those IP address uh, bars are written in with something, this checks to see if it's valid. Um, it's trying to say, hey, if it's too long. Um, also, start. Here's the cell start again. It's moving the cursor position. So if the cursor position's at right here, um, when we type, it will go here because it says length. Cell start is equal to length of the text. Um, and then it, at the end, it enables start button or disable. So go back here and run it. Show where this is. That's these down here. Hit join real quick. So here, I try to put 256. It doesn't allow me. It just goes up to 255. Um, if I put 0 and 0 here, you notice I can't start. Um, also, you need a name. There's code in there that, now, that tells that it needs a name. Okay, so <clears throat> basically, here it's just saying if that text is greater than 255, just make it 255. So that's what I just showed. I'm going down. Here's the start button. Okay, finally we've decided we're going to start to the next form. Um, first, trim out any spaces. I hate when people put a lot of spaces in their name just to make it look wacky. Um, count the spaces. <coughs> Can't remember why I had it count the spaces. Um, oh, this should be removing the count the number of spaces. You can see it says do until there is no two space. So he says if there's one, check it start on one, um, the text name, if it has two spaces in there anywhere, and, tech, and check by VB text compare. So um, do until it equals zero. That would mean there's no two spaces anywhere. If there is, then replace out two spaces and continue the loop until there is no two spaces. <coughs> 